Hi, Stephen Caleb from Brownells here with another edition of Smithbusters. And today we're going to look at that myth, or maybe it's not a myth, that letting the slide slam down with a round in the chamber is going to break your extractor on an automatic pistol. Caleb, what do you say? I say that's kind of a loaded statement, pun intended. Uh, <sighs> Because it depends on, there, there's a lot of different types of extractors out there. Take these two firearms, for example. You have your 1911, your standard, you know, older style internal extractor. Right, the old Browning extractor. Exactly. And then on this one, you have your newer style, or I say newer external. style. External. External extractor. And external extractors were used when this one was made, but that, that's besides the point. So the external extractor is a lot more common now. Um, right. Simply because it's easier to replace and things like Glocks, that. Glocks, SIGs, M&Ps, you name it, the new the current Browning high powers. Right, and as far as tensioning those extractors go, it's a lot less finicky than it is to tensioning one that's just made out of a solid piece of spring steel. Yeah, if you've ever so. tuned a 1911 extractor, you know there's a little bit to it. Right, so uh, I think the main area this myth comes from is that if your extractor is too tight, it can certainly break the tip off of the extractor whenever it's slamming on that rim because it's not riding over it. Right, and it needs a generous polished slope as well. It needs to hit it with an angled surface so it can ride over that rim. Right, and on most semi-automatic handguns, as the slide's coming forward, the round coming up is actually going under the extractor, yep. so the extractor doesn't have to go over Almost it anyway. every time. So, if you look at the front of your extractors, they have a bevel cut on them, and the reason that bevel's there is so that if you have a round in the chamber and your slide slams home, it'll ride over the rim rather than just beat the rim. Right, and that external extractor has all the room in the world to flex outward, yeah. whereas the internal does not. It's trapped by that tunnel. So if it's not got enough clearance, something's got to give somewhere. Yep, and that's where it'll give. So, And then you also run into another variable, which is the quality of the metal. Sure. So a lot of your, you know, South American guns, you know, the South American steel used on those isn't the greatest in the world. So I probably would be a little bit more hesitant to slam the slide home on one of those. Right, and I'll confess, I broke an extractor on an AMT hardballer back in the 80s. It was a stainless steel extractor, which isn't the greatest idea in the world anyway. But I was dropping rounds in and letting the slide go closed because I'd always have some left over at the end of a shooting session. And sure enough, it broke. But I replaced it with a genuine Colt tool steel extractor and it never hiccuped after that. So you get what you pay for, and that goes for all things, including steel. Mm -hmm. so, yep. uh, so what where I'll, I'll kind of end this is that if you slam it home on, you know, assuming all your parts are in spec, everything's good, you're using good quality steel, it's not going to break your extractor, and you can probably do it all day long right. with, with no damage to the firearm. However, you know, if you're using a 1911 that has an extractor that's not fit properly or it's a little bit too tight, yeah, you definitely run the risk of breaking it. So, right, so it's not a myth. It's not a myth, it can happen, but on a gun that's properly tuned and everything, and assuming everything's good, it's not gonna happen. Right, so. exactly. So that's it. If you've had different experiences with breaking extractors, um, let us know. We'd like to see what you say in the comments. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time with another edition of Smithbusters. <laughs>